Hi, my name is Veronica with Mini Urban Farm, a channel about urban homesteading in the suburbs. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about mapping out your garden and exactly how to do that. Because of course, as many of you know, it is seed starting time, all right? You probably got your seeds and you're thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, direct sow or transplant out my seedlings into the garden. I'm gonna start my seeds, um, put them in the greenhouse and wait for the weather to warm up. But that is not the next step. You get your seeds, then you map out your garden. <laughs> then you plant it out in the garden because if you don't do this there's a good chance your plants will die which is why you need this video all right so i have my little notebook here all right this is everything that i want to share with you guys um, it is a lot of information but it is going to be super helpful um, so the major things that we're going to talk about we're going to talk about plant spacing and we're going to talk about companion planting now i'm also going to share with you how i learned this the hard way um, in hopes that you guys won't make the same mistakes because it was really not um, the most fun to see that all my plants had died um, and then we're also going to jump on the computer and i'm going to map out my garden for this year's spring um, on the computer and i'll just just record it I'll screen share record it um, and or not screen share I don't think it's called screen share <laughs> um, but I will record it I'll film it and then I'll incorporate it into the video so you can see exactly how I do this all right, so the main reason that you want to make sure you're mapping out your garden before you plant anything out into the garden is because a lot of these plants um, have different needs and a lot of the plants that you'll plant in your garden, um, the roots will be competing for space if you plant them too closely together or if you plant them from, um, if you plant them close to other things that need the same kind of nutrients or that offset, you know, the, the health of other plants. So you want to make sure that whatever you're planting together um, can first of all, survive together, but you also wanna make sure you're not overcrowding your plants, all right? The way that I learned this the hard way is because I got really excited one year and I was gonna start um, like four zucchini plants and three yellow squash plants and all of this in one raised bed. Now the raised bed was probably, um, I think it was like three feet by eight feet or something like that. Um, and I had a bunch of other things also in that raised bed. Now, one zucchini plant did really, really well, right? because it killed all of the other zucchini plants. Um, it also killed the yellow squash and a whole bunch of beans that were in there because of course zucchini plants need a lot of space. So you always wanna make sure that whatever you're planting, you have enough space to plant that, all right? And I'll share later in this video how it is you can find out exactly how much space you need per each plant um, and the types of plants and all that kind of thing and how you can tell what's a good companion plant for whatever it is you're growing. Now, the way I do my plant spacing is basically using the square foot garden method. Um, I do this in raised beds, and it's not really an exact science. Like sometimes I kind of break the rules a little bit um, and plant other things in the same uh, area and, and use kind of like a, a permaculture technique where you plant you know beneficial things in like the bottom um, canopy, I guess if you will. It's not really a canopy, but kind of like under the same space. Like so if your tomatoes grow and then you plant like basil kind of in the same vicinity, um, it's not really giving your tomatoes, you know, the entire um, square foot that it needs but generally you know it's not going to create a problem at least um, in my experience now square foot gardening means that for every square foot um, there's certain plants that can take up the entire square foot right so tomatoes for instance you need one square foot per tomato plant um, carrots however you can plant a whole bunch of carrots in one square foot or you can plant like nine green bean plants in one square foot so you really want to make sure that you are using um, all of your your space available as efficiently as possible now there is um, high density planting and a lot of other forms of also planting out your garden and making sure that you have the space you need um, but generally this is kind of what I stick to and it just helps because right now as you can see behind me I, um, I garden in raised beds so each of my raised beds um, with the exception of the very back one um, all the other ones are two feet by six feet so I know that I have like little markings on the sides of my raised beds and sometimes they wear off but I, I just go with a, uh, a, sharp, a sharpie and I kind of like you know draw a little line like a little tick on the side um, of the raised bed on the wood um, for one square foot two square foot three square foot that sort of thing and it's really um, it's not precise like I don't measure it out exactly exactly I don't really put you know lines in the middle of them what I do is I'll take um, you know my marking so I have like one square foot you know starting here ending there whatever um, and I'll take like my finger and I kind of draw the little intersection so I know like okay this is my square foot that I'm working with um, or I'll take like a little piece of wood or something and just kind of make a line in the soil um, and that's basically how I do it so now we're gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what it is you need um, what you're gonna need to know before you start mapping out your garden and basically just putting it all together and Milo has just bought me the ball so I can play fetch with him Okay, so we are sitting here at my computer. 
Um, I just have an open version of Google Docs, um, which is a free version of like, it's kind of like Excel if you don't know what it is. Um, this is where I keep the majority of my, um, my gardening stuff. So if you can see down here at the bottom, um, I'm not sure if it's capturing it or not, but there's like a to-do uh, tab and there's a planting map tab and then there's a planting list, right? So this, um, this is going to go on the planting map specifically. So what I've done here, um, on the left side, you'll see a version of my garden beds, right? So I've kind of, you know, outlined these cells. I've just gone in here, um, done three feet by eight feet, um, which is the back garden bed that I have, the raised bed, and I've just outlined um, the outside, right? So outer borders are all outlined. Um, I just highlighted all of this and did the outer borders like that. All right, um, the same thing for the rest of my garden beds, right? I have all the way down one through nine garden beds. Um, these ones I know are two feet by six feet, right? So every single one of these is a square foot, right? Um, and I just did that for all of them. So I've also put in here um, where there's trellises. So right now I currently have trellises on beds four and beds five and on beds eight and beds nine. Um, I need more trellis space because I've selected to grow a lot of things that require trellising. Um, so I'm adding trellis space to six and seven. Um, and I'll be doing that before I plant everything out. And then down here, I have like these bigger pots, right? They're not really pots, but like they're um, like barrels or whatever, um, wooden barrels where I have rosemary plants. So I have already had those um, planted since last year. Those will not change, okay? Um, I have on this side, my planting list. Um, and I'm gonna cut, cut that out and put it in here. So I have my planting list with everything that I'm planting. Now, if you want to see um, one by one me going through all of the things that I'm planting, I did a video and I'll link it um, above so you can see and you know my thoughts on all of these things, why I chose them, um, why I didn't choose other things, um, etc. So this is everything that I'm planting, um, including some seeds that I got from a, a seed swap that I did, which are down here at the bottom. So these things all grow differently, right? These are my herbs, which I already have potted. So everything here in blue is already accounted for. My rosemary is, like I said, down here. My lemon thyme and my German thyme I have in kind of like smaller pots around. I didn't, bother the, I didn't bother to put them on the map just because they're kind of like pots that I move around depending on where the sun is. Um, I do have other herbs like my parsleys and my basils, um, my scallions, things like that, that I am going to be planting probably inside the raised beds. Usually those things go inside the raised beds. The reason I don't plant um, these ones here highlighted in blue in the raised beds is because rosemary, um, I have my two giant rosemary plants um, that I don't rip out. So these ones grow very large, like they have grown significantly large um, in the past year or so. So those ones stay as is and I don't need any more rosemary than that. Um, I have maybe like some tabletop rosemary cuttings that I I move around in the actual patio, but other than that, I don't need more rosemary. Um, the lemon thyme, German thyme, these things spread, so I do not recommend putting them in your garden beds. If you planted them anywhere in the garden beds, um, they will spread like crazy and just fill the entire garden bed with lemon thyme and German thyme. Now, if that's something you'd like, then by all means, plant it out. The same thing with mint, anything that spreads like that, um, it kind of has, I don't want to call them runners, but the, the, uh, the roots just spread out so much and they just take over everything. So those ones I keep in pots. Generally the rest of things I put in the garden beds um, unless I am missing some space. So I have chosen a lot more things than I was going to, um, to plant out originally. And these things, the curled parsley, the basil, the scallions, things like that, they might end up in pots. The same thing with the peonies. Um, some of these things might end up in pots, but that's what, what I'm going to actually determine today. So the first thing you wanna do is actually put a physical depiction of what your garden looks like. This is what my garden looks like. Um, if you haven't seen the urban layout of what this physically looks like in a picture, then you can um, you can check that video out and I'll try to link it also above. Um, and then you need everything that you're going to be growing. This will not work if you don't have um, a list of everything you're gonna be planting. You can't map out your garden without that list. So that is step one, garden, and planting list. All right, you can do this on an um, on an Excel. You can do this in um, Google Sheets. You can also do this like on a piece of graph paper. Um, I've done it on graph paper before, and it just makes it a little bit easier to take into the garden with you, right? So I'll take all this stuff into the garden with me, this sheet, and just make sure I'm planting everything in the right place. But at the end of the day, I'll just print this out, and it'll be the same thing. 
Um, I just like that I'm able to, to type and not have to erase everything. So that's that. Now on this side here, all right, I am going to put in the number of plants, okay? And I will, it'll become a little bit more clear what I'm doing as I go through. Um, so my Roma tomatoes, right? Let's take for an example, my Roma tomatoes. I like having um, about six Roma tomato plants. Um, I had in fall of last year and that seemed to work out really, really well. We got like, I don't know how many pounds of tomatoes. So generally for me, I know that six plants is pretty, is pretty good, right, for my Roma tomatoes specifically. So I'm gonna stick with six this year. Um, if I go through this list and determine like I'd rather have something else then I will reduce it, but for right now, I'm gonna put in six, okay? That is based on my experience in the past. Now I'm gonna show you how you can determine how many plants you want, right? Like you don't have to guesstimate how many. All right, so for me, six plants is good. I know that six plants of Roma tomatoes takes up six square feet, right? Because six, um, because Roma tomatoes need a square foot each, right? One square foot per plant. You can plant them a little bit more densely, like maybe, I don't know, every eight feet or, or every eight inches or every 10 inches. Um, but generally, I like to have a little bit more space between them, at least for the Romas, because they do grow um, vertically as well. They're like a bush. They don't really require trellis. I do the Florida weave on them, um, but not really trellising. So for me, I'm just going to go with six, okay? I'm going to start and just run all the way down the list. So I'm, I'm not gonna talk as much once I tell you kind of what I'm doing, um, but I'm gonna take my Roma tomatoes, all right? And I'm gonna plant them in a bed where I know doesn't have a trellis because they do not require a trellis. Um, right now in the garden, they're planted here, right? But I'm probably gonna end up putting a trellis here. Um, that's just what we, we decided on. So my Roma tomatoes, need full sun, they can't go under anything that's trellising, right? So my trellises kind of go up, right, up the sides and then across the length and then down. Um, it's like a boxed version of a trellis. So I'm gonna plant them in here. These are gonna be where my Roma tomatoes grow. Um, so I'm gonna plant, and I'll play around with this, it's, it's gonna end up being a little bit like a game of Tetris. So I'm gonna put my Roma tomatoes, all right, and that's what I did, I just abbreviate, all right, and I'm gonna copy this, and, or maybe I'll just do this, I'll drag it down um, and then drag it down. And you know what, I'm probably just gonna do the same thing. I'll put them at the end of the bed this time um, before I put them in the middle of the bed, um, which ends up being a little bit lopsided, but I'll put them here, <clears throat> Roma tomatoes. All right, so I know I need six. Oh, what happened? I dragged the wrong thing and it didn't. Here, I'll just do the border again. And, I don't know why it's doing that. All right, but I'll fix it after. Okay, so my Roma tomatoes are all set. I'm gonna take that and I'm going to put my abbreviations down so that I don't forget what I used as the abbreviation. Now, these are all set, all right, and I will highlight them in blue so that I know we are good to go. Um, and then the grape tomatoes, right? So my grape tomatoes are definitely vining. They need a trellis. Um, I am also, where's my other tomato? I'm growing orange peach tomato, which is here. So both of these need a trellis. Um, I try not to plant all my tomatoes in the same space because like if one um, if one tomato plant gets like leaf miners, then the rest of your tomato plants are gonna get leaf miners. So spacing them out just seems to be good, like just in general, um, spacing out your plants of the same, um, of the same fruit or vegetable. Um, if one plant gets it, it doesn't spread necessarily to all of the others. So I try to space them out as much as possible. Um, I will probably do my grape tomatoes here. They seem to be doing really well um, this year. So I will do grape tomatoes and grape tomatoes and at the other ends of the trellis as well. So both sides are going to have a trellis. All right, so this side will grow here. It'll grow up the trellis in the back um, and then across the top of the raised bed. And then these sides will trellis up this side and grow a top, like on top of the raised beds, which will give me enough time to, or give me enough space, I mean, to plant things underneath. So I am going to do eight, Roma, uh, eight grape tomatoes again, because that is what I did this year. And I had tons of tomatoes and I loved it. So 
that's good. Um, I get eight plants and then I have four square feet here, right? To plant out something that needs a little bit more shade because these are going to shade out the bottom of this bed, right? The middle part of the bed will be a little bit more shaded. Um, and then, you know, they just can't, I can't plant something there that needs a ton of sun. So my grape tomatoes are done. I'm gonna do eight plants of grape tomatoes. All right, um, I try to do my trellising things first because that way I can see like how much shade space I have, right? Like underneath here is the shade space. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, my orange peach tomato. Um, I will probably put somewhere around here, I think. They're more colorful, and I know that maybe this isn't really like important, but I like to have the colorful things at the beginning of the garden. Like I walk in through here, this is my entryway to the garden, and just seeing like the colorful things makes me happy. So I'm gonna put these here. I'm gonna take orange peach, and that's gonna be my abbreviation, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I know I have never grown these before. I'm not sure um, how much they produce, but I mean, we'll see. And I'll fix the borders again after everything is said and done. All right, so my orange peach tomatoes, where did they go? They're right here, those are good. All right, and I'm gonna have eight and orange peach, perfect. So I'm gonna highlight that in blue, those are accounted for. All right, so um, I'll just try to pick out the things that are trellising. Um, I know that and the things that for sure I'm gonna grow. Like these things, I want to grow. All of these things I got in a seed swap and I want to grow them, but for sure the ones that I'm gonna grow um, are Marvel of Venice, which is a, it's a yellow wax bean, but it is a pole bean. So I need a trellis for that. Um, and I think I'm probably gonna put them over here because the sun is on this side of the house. Like my house is here. So the, the garden is actually up against the side of the house. So the house is here. I'm going to put these things where it gets sun. Um, I mean the entire, like this side of the garden still gets enough sun so I'm not particularly worried about putting the tomatoes on this side here but at the end of the day like I just, you know, in my head it makes a difference. Um, they probably get within half an hour of sunlight because the shadow just kind of like trips across but it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna put Marvel of Venice and I try not to use like the same abbreviations for everything. All right, so Marvel of Venice, I have eight um, actually, you know what? It's not eight. All right, let me correct myself. So this is where it comes um, into determining how many plants you have, right? So I know that this is each a square foot, right? And these are pole beans. So in the past, I have grown quite a few pole beans, right? Like generally one plant of pole beans is not enough. Um, the same thing with bush beans, at least for me. If you want to have enough plants of beans to feed your family, you're going to need somewhere like I don't know, 30 beans, right? 30 bean plants, at least for me, like that way I'm not worried like if I'm gonna have enough and that lasts the entire season. So I know that I'm gonna dedicate this much space and I can play around with this afterward, but I want about 30 plants. I think last season I planted 32 green bean plants. So I'm gonna try to go with 32 green bean plants, um, or sorry, 32 Marvel of Venice pole bean plants um, because that is what I've done in the past. And for me, it seems to be like a good amount that we're harvesting beans at least a couple times a week. Um, I am gonna plant other beans, so I might reduce this a little bit. I'm not as concerned about the beans, but I'll go and adjust this as needed. I'll remove them if I need the space. So for pole beans, this is how you determine how many plants you're gonna to wanna to start. Like don't start your entire pack of seeds because you're gonna just waste them if you don't actually plant them out. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go pole beans per square foot, all right? And it's gonna tell you, all right, bush beans, one to four plants per square foot, pole beans, one to four. Now, this is generally accurate. Um, I happen to know that this is not super accurate right now. So I'm gonna come in here and do some more research, right? I'm, gonna, I'm not just gonna take the first answer um, that comes out. So how much space do pole beans? Let's see, um, three to four inches apart. Okay, that's more accurate. And then I'm gonna come in here and I see something that says nine. I see something that says six. Okay, that sounds about right. And then we have in here the same thing, um, pole beans eight. All right, so for me, I generally plant about six or so in a square foot. Now you can plant up to nine. Um, 
depending on who you ask, but we're going to go with six, I think is going to be enough. So if I need um, 30 ish, right, that's fine. So I'll do six in here and six in here is 12 and then 12 on the other side here is 24. Now, considering that I'm going to plant out a lot of other beans, I think that's probably good. I'll probably just leave it at that for now and I'll remove the rest of them. So I'm going to actually get rid of this and leave some more space um, and I'll do six in here in every square I've put Marvel of Venice beans. So six times four is 24. I'm going to put 24 plants I'm going to start. So Marvel of Venice is 24 plants. Now I know that I might get some that don't survive, right? I always take into account that if I need, you know, 24 pole beans plants or six Roma tomato plants, I am probably going to start more, just a few more than I actually need. Um, I always start more anyway, just because I actually sell my plant starts around the neighborhood. So I always have extra, but for my Roma tomatoes, like mine personally, if I'm planning on selling 20 of them and I want six for myself, I'll probably plant about three or four more that I'm planning on like just extra to have. So always, always start a few more seeds. Like if you're planning on having, you know, four plants, start maybe six and then you can pick the best ones, the, the, um, the ones that do the best, the ones that look the strongest, and that's just how I do it. All right, so that's planted out Marvel of Venice, perfect. So I'm not really concerned about this shading all the way out because again, these are gonna grow on the back of that trellis and these are gonna go on the back of that trellis and then all the way across and across and down the other sides as well. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can watch the garden layout video because it kind of shows like how the trellises grow. So that's done. Um, and then I have my pink potted beans, right? I'm trying to pick out everything that needs like a trellis space. So my potted beans, these are really cool. These are pink beans that I'm excited to try. The same thing with the zebra beans. Um, oh wait, these are these are bush, so never mind. Um, I'm gonna go with the pole beans, zebra pole beans. And I'm gonna take this and put it also on a trellis space. Um, and I'm just gonna do the same thing because I know that they're six to nine per square foot. Um, and I'll do zebra pole beans. Honestly, I might just come in here and say, okay, well, I'm going to plant eight per square foot this time. So instead, um, I'll probably do eight or um, eight per square foot is 32 total plants. So I'll probably end up smushing them in a little bit more just so I can have more um, square footage. I think last time I probably did around eight per square foot. So that works out fine. It'll probably end up being more like 32. All right, so zebra pole beans are done. And then what I do is I go through and I do all of the things that require like a lot of space, all of the things that need um, a trellis. So I know right off the bat, like these things here require, they can do some shade. This is the same thing, can do some shade. Um, sour gherkins are trellising. So I'm, I'm kind of limited my trellis space now. Um, so I'm playing around with how much more trellis space I have. I have one here that needs trellis space, loofahs need trellis space, um, eggplant needs trellis space, and then that needs trellis space. So I might have to sacrifice something at the end of the day, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna go, um, I'm gonna stop talking now and just go and figure out my trellis space and then come back afterward. Okay, so another consideration that I want to talk about, right, I'm not done mapping out my trellis space, but when you are starting to like run out of room and have to put things closer to each other, right, so I'm going to have to put some things down here, right, that's my garden space and something has to grow next to these tomatoes or underneath the tomatoes. Now it comes to talking about companion planting. So with companion planting, right, there are some plants that cannot be planted together because the roots compete for the nutrients, um, they need the same nutrients and there's not enough in the soil to give nutrients to all of them um, or you know some plants like I don't know if it's called releasing chemicals in the soil but they have like you know some sort of thing about that plant um, will actually kill the plant next to it depending on what kind of plant it is so I I know more or less what things can be planted together but some of these things like I'm not sure I've never grown okra before so we'll see like I want to put my okra right here um, and I don't think it needs trellising, but I'm going to do the Florida weave on it. I don't think it grows that, that big that it, did, that it needs a trellis. Um, but I want to make sure that okra can grow next to my Roma tomatoes. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to open another tab because this is my, my spacing tab. I'm going to say okra companion plants. 
right? And I'm just going to make sure that tomatoes is on this list. So um, it looks like, let's see, things that need plenty of water. Okay, tomatoes can do with them some water. Um, cucumbers, pepper, melons, basil. Okay, um, what can't be planted? I want to make sure tomatoes is on the list. Let me see. Um, let me go back here. Here we go. Um, another plant you can use alongside your okra is a tomato plant. Perfect. So they do well together, and I'm going to just make sure. Um, yeah, tomatoes is on that list. Tomatoes. Perfect. It looks like there isn't anything coming up that you know would make a horrible idea to put these two together. So I'm going to go ahead and plant my okra here. Now, with my okra, I have never planted out okra before. So I want to know how many okra plants do I need, right? How many okra plants do I need. All right, um, let's see. So four or five plants produces enough for more fa for most families. Okay, sounds good. Um, that's about the amount of space I was going to de dedicate to it. Grow six plants per person. Yield five to ten pounds. Okay, that sounds good to me. I'm convinced. So I'm going to go ahead and plant maybe like four or five plants. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to come in here I'm gonna put them here, um, and I believe they are one square foot. Okra, yeah, okra is a rather large plant, so I'm gonna plant one per square foot. I'm gonna do okra, okra. You know what, I'll start off with this, and then if I need space in, you know, in somewhere, like I run out of space, then I'll probably remove these two okra plants, and I'll plant something else in there, like my herbs or something, which grow well with tomatoes. So. That's fine for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say six okra plants, but that's subject to change afterward. All right, so that's basically how you would determine like how many plants you would need. I mean, you're gonna have to adjust it like year after year, you know how many plants of tomatoes you need. You know, if your family hates okra, maybe only plant the one plant if you really like it. But you know, I really like okra and I use a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and plant some okra pending the space issue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my um, or not get rid of, but plant it out, map, map it out here. Um, my squash and my zucchini, because I know exactly where that's going to grow. Um, that is going in my bed back here in my number one, um, because this bed is wider, right? So this is a three, um, a three foot by eight foot bed. And I know that um, squash and zucchini need a lot of space, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and divide this and put zucchini in one. So Zucchini is green. I'm just going to kind of map it out so that I can do that. So, and then this is going to be yellow, and then this one will be green again. And then in between here, I'll do yellow for my yellow squash, and yellow squash grows the exact same way. So, it's going to be the same thing. So, both of those are accounted for. That's exactly where I plan, planned on planting them. So, I'll do two zucchini plants, and then I'll do two yellow squash plants, um, which is fine because zucchini does actually produce a lot per plant. Um, and for the amount that we eat it, like I'm not super concerned with having tons and tons of it. I think it's probably looking like this is going to end up in a pot. So I'm going to just go ahead and make an executive decision to remove my scallion plants. Um, then probably the peonies, like I planned on planting these in the garden, but I think these will probably just go in a pot as well um, because they'll look really pretty on the patio so that'll be fine um, and then we have peppers we have bush beans left we have eggplant and then we have hmm, and the eggplant does need a little bit of a trellis so I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that I'll probably take this side of the trellis usually like I grow them across but in the past I've also done it this way where I just put this over here um, because this will take a while to go up there like five feet trellises and then all the way across is six feet so it'll probably take a while um, I'm not really concerned about it not getting enough sun in my opinion but I'm also kind of considering maybe do that somewhere else and then when I do my Marvel of Venice right these are going to be um, like six or eight per square foot and so then I will take them and I'll kind of like slant the plants this way or kind of like mold them right they have like little feelers that go out and they wrap onto the trellis so I'll just 
push them this way onto the trellis and then out the outside edge of the trellis and then they'll just kind of go that way which is fine and then the same thing with the loofah will just go this way and then by the time they get out here um, they'll have a little bit more space and come back this way so that should be fine um, it might clash a little bit to be honest um, but I really really want to plant out my eggplant in a sunny place that has a trellis so and I don't want to add more trellis space because I've already added quite a bit so I'm gonna say my eggplant goes in here right it's so like I, I mentioned this is kind of like a little game of Tetris and I'm pretty sure eggplant is one per square foot yeah one per square foot that's how I grew it last time so I'm just gonna make sure that you know anything I plant in here what can plant what can be a companion plant for eggplant my Alessia pepper is there and on either side and I might just end up probably filling the whole thing with peppers um, I have another type of pepper I forgot oh I didn't list it here um, but I have another type of pepper that I also want to grow so I might just fill these in depending on if I have enough space or not um, I think it's sriracha peppers I, I can't remember um, but my eggplant is gonna be four eggplants which is fine because that will produce a lot of eggplant um, so I'll do four eggplant plants All right, so eight pepper plants and pepper plants need I think it's one per square foot um, yeah so pepper is gonna be one per square foot so I've gotten all my my outer beds my trellis space done um, I do have some things which look like they're gonna fit pretty nicely in here so that works out um, my rocket arugula I know that it can take some shade generally I give it um, more Sun but I have had in other summer months past that it actually dries out very quickly and the leaves will tend to burn so I'm okay putting it in the shade and I probably am gonna put it um, closer to my tomatoes over here um, because I know I use that more or maybe on this side of the house because it's a tiny bit more shady but I know that I use it so when I'm coming in through the garden um, I don't have to walk all the way back to the end of the garden to use my arugula every single day for breakfast now my arugula um, I don't really plant out like specific number of plants I just take the entire packet right and I'll mark like this side and that side of it and I take the packet um, and I direct sow them um, and I just take like the whole packet and it gets just kind of sewn like across scattered around these four square feet um, and it ends up being like a whole bunch of arugula plants um, but they just kind of bush up and grow and in a month you have arugula um, that's how I've done it the last couple times and it works perfectly um, I'm not really concerned about it overcrowding so I'm just gonna take my rocket arugula I'm gonna put my little abbreviation and that's fine like I don't need to to count how many plants for my arugula um, and for the Swiss chard, I think I'll probably do the Swiss chard on the other side of this um, because my Swiss, you know what, I'm going to try to put some of my, my herbs over here actually because I use those way more often. So my Swiss chard will go back here somewhere, um, which is fine. I still use my Swiss chard quite a bit. Um, mostly to feed the chickens but in salads and stuff also so I'm gonna make sure that my Swiss chard can grow in the same place as my uh, my sour gherkins my little cucumbers um, so I'm just gonna check on that okay so maybe I'm not gonna plant my chard next to my cucumbers that seems like a bad idea so I might try to plant it let me see what is OP um, orange peach tomato okay I think I might be able to plant it in here Alright, so this is another point I want to make. Um, I can't really find if loofah and Swiss chard grow well together. Um, it might just be like a weird combination. Um, but if you can see the pests, right, like these pests um, are just all the things that could affect loofah. Now, some of my um, Swiss chard plants were being eaten alive by like beetles and by caterpillars. So I'm seeing like a lot of squash bug type things. Um, slugs was a problem with my Swiss chard this year. So if I'm going to take a wild guess right loofah is plagued by all of these things as are my uh, my swiss chard plants i'm not going to plant them in the same area because if one of them gets it it's going to spread it to the other one i'm going to probably not do that so um, i'm just going to make another estimated guess in here i'm going to do swiss chard and beans i think that will probably be fine yep all right so my swiss chard is going to go in here even though these are going to get bushy and these are going to get bushy I'm just going to plant this out and then probably trim them a little bit more than usual um, just so that it doesn't get like a hot mess 
um, about my Swiss chard plants, and I think it was four per square foot, but I, I don't remember. Okay, four, perfect. All right, so 16 Swiss chard, which I think is probably what I have now, and it's a good amount, even though I, I do feed it to the chickens quite a bit. So I'll, plant, I'll, I'll probably plan on sticking with that. All right, so the only three things, and oh my gosh, this is gonna be a long video, um, but the only three things left are my herbs, which is fine, um, because my herbs can go pretty much anywhere. Like I've never really had a problem growing parsley or basil um, next to anything. There are very few things that clash with this. I think that the majority of the reason is because like they're, they're somewhat of a shallow rooted, and I could be wrong, but I think I read somewhere that's probably why. But I'm just gonna take them and stick them wherever I use them the most, right? Like wherever it's not gonna be a pain um, to walk to the end of the garden every single day for parsley. So I'm gonna take my my curled parsley, and honestly, I have four square feet of parsley right now, and that's a lot. So I think I'm probably just gonna do the same thing and do curled parsley in here, curled parsley, and then flat leaf parsley. Right, so two square feet, and I do it just like that, like one square foot and then one square foot um, next to each other. So that's a lot of parsley because I don't really plant out like per plant. The same thing with I do the arugula, um, the same, sorry, the same thing that I do with my arugula. I just kind of like scatter all the seeds. And I do this with pretty much anything that the seeds are tiny, tiny, right? Anything that needs like one quarter of an inch depth. I just scatter the seeds and I don't even bother to cover them. I just scatter the seeds, water them in, and then let them grow. And I don't really thin them. Um, the only thing I think that I think I thin is basil. Um, so the parsley is going to go here. Um, and I'll probably just change this to Italian parsley because I don't know. I'm going to look at this and be like, what the heck is IF? Um, so curled parsley and then Italian parsley. Um, so I'll just do those the same way. Just scatter my seeds and whatever grows, grows. And you have like a giant bush of parsley, which is fine. Um, my parsley plants in the past, like I planted one, I think my first time par planting parsley and it just got massive Um and yeah, I'd rather just have like a whole bunch of it instead of having one massive parsley plant. And then my basil will go here near my tomatoes. These are my other orange peach tomatoes. So my basil is going to do the same thing. And then I will have four square feet of basil. Now I will do basil in the exact same way. I will just scatter all the plants, but then I'll go back and thin them so that they do have a little bit more space in between. So... That's that. Now I have some leftover space, which I'm actually quite surprised, but it's probably because I took out a lot of these things and put them in pots, right? My scallions and my poppies were supposed to go in there. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I will probably do more of whatever is lacking, right? So I know I use a lot of arugula, but I have four square feet, which is probably enough. That's... Hmm. I mean, I do feed it to the chickens too, so I might just go ahead and plant more of those. I have quite a few bean plants, right? So I have a lot of peppers. Um, I could probably plant my pepper plants in here, my hot pepper plants, so that they don't cross um, with my sweet peppers. So I'm just going to come back in here and make sure that my cucumbers and peppers are a good companion. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick my pepper plants in here, so my sriracha peppers. I think that's what they call, uh, they're called, I'm not sure on that, but they're like a, a hot pepper. Um, so I'm just going to take that and do four peppers. I'm just going to call them sriracha if they're not that, then that's okay. All right, um, and then I have four more square feet, um, which I will probably, let me see. Um, I don't necessarily want to plant out any more beans. That is a lot of beans already. Okay, so I completed my list. Um, I have the number of plants I need for everything, except if um, if it's potted, like I'm just gonna decide like, okay, well, how many seeds per pot. Um, the scallions I plant in bunches, and then the other things that are already potted, those are already out in the garden. Um, these things I just scatter around, so I'm not concerned about the number of plants, but that's pretty much it. I mean, this is like my entire garden space um, mapped out. Now I will print this out um, and take this into the garden with me so I can just reference this with my little legend here. And the same thing when I am starting my seeds, um, and I will be filming another video on that. So I will take everything here and say, okay, well, I'm gonna plant out, you know, I need six, I'll probably plant out eight. I need eight, 
of these grape tomato plants i'll probably plant out 10 plus what i'm planning to sell um but i will just go through the list and keep a note of everything that i am growing um, and making sure that i am planting out the appropriate number of plants so that is how I map out the garden. Now this is super important as you can see because you don't want anything to be overcrowded. You don't want to plant things um, that are going to kill each other in the same bed right next to each other. And with this map, I can make sure that everything that is going into this garden is not going to kill each other and it has the appropriate number of space, right? It, or it has the appropriate amount of space that it needs. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was super helpful. Um, if you have anything else that you'd also do to map out your garden, feel free to let me know below. I would love to learn from you guys. Um, but thanks, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it if you watched until the end. Um, I will see you in the next video.